Mr. Speaker, as background, I have served on the House Armed Services Committee for 11 years and on the Foreign Affairs Committee. There is an old saying, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. The lesson from Vietnam is that war is hell. If America is unwilling to do horrible things required to win a war, then America should not fight it. Be all in or all out. A World War II lesson is that Europe's pre-war appeasement strategy does not work against aggressor nations. In the 1930s, Adolf Hitler and his National Socialist German Workers' Party time and again seized more and more of Europe. Beginning in 1935, Adolf Hitler and dictatorial socialist Germany annexed the Saarland, invaded and seized Austria in the Anschluss, seized the Sudetenland from Czechoslovakia, seized the Slavic state, Bohemia and Moravia, and forced Lithuania into ceding the Memel territory. In response, each time, Europe and the free world tried appeasement and did little to nothing thereby emboldening Adolf Hitler and dictatorial socialist Germany. The result? Hitler and Germany invaded Poland, triggering the Holocaust and the deaths of tens of millions of people in World War II. The question is, has the world learned from history? In 2014, Vladimir Putin and Russia invaded Crimea. The free world did little to nothing. Also in 2014, Vladimir Putin and Russia inspired a rebellion in Donetsk and Lugansk in Ukraine, costing thousands of lives and creating hundreds of thousands of desperate refugees. The free world did little to nothing. Last month, Russia invaded Ukraine again, apparently seeking the total destruction and conquest of Ukraine. I admire the bravery and kindred spirit of Ukraine citizens who fight and die for liberty and freedom against overwhelming odds. They remind me of the American Revolutionary War heroes like George Washington and Patrick Henry and places like Valley Forge, Cow Pens, Kings Mountain, and Saratoga. Fortunately, something is different about this Russian attack on Ukraine. This time, the world does not do nothing. This time, the free world is helping Ukraine during their time of peril. This time, time will tell whether the world's help is enough and effective. First, Europe and America impose economic sanctions on Russia. In that vein, we must learn from Vietnam. Economic sanctions must be all in or all out. There can be no half measures. America must be in this to win or not be in it at all. Second. Europe and America must, and are, supplying Ukraine with much-needed tank-killing javelins, aircraft-destroying stingers, advanced fighter jets to replace those lost in combat, and other military equipment Ukraine desperately needs. Third, Europe must decide whether to deploy combat troops. For emphasis, it is my view that America should not even consider providing combat troops in Ukraine unless Europe first does so in significant numbers. And even then, whatever America decides about troop assistance should never go beyond assistance to our European allies. I, like many Americans, am tired of America spending our treasury and our lives in so many parts of the globe. It is time for the rest of the free world to step up. Ukrainians bravely shed themselves of the dictatorial boot in 1991. Russians can and should do the same. My message to the Russian people is this. Your Russian comrades fought side by side with you in World War II against Adolf Hitler and dictatorial socialist Germany. Now Vladimir Putin forces you to kill each other and die by the thousands in Ukraine. It does not have to be this way. The true way to peace is do what America regularly does replace our political leaders. I urge freedom-loving Russians to bravely stand up and do the same. Do what is necessary to get the leadership Russians want and deserve, and do it before it is too late. That is the lesson of World War II. Mr. Speaker, I yield back.